Folk, he's signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also leaned on his blessed supper and said, Lord, who is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry to what is that to thee? Follow me. And in Second Peter chapter 1, and please excuse me, those who would criticize of reading a long text, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, Though you know them and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it fitting as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Mm -hmm. And from this portion, these portions of the Word of God and somewhat too in connection with the theme of the Sunday School Department, studying to know and knowing to grow, mm -hmm. I would say some things to you tonight from the subject the inflexible directive. The inflexible directive. Jesus told Peter what kind of death was going to be used for him to glorify God in the end of his days. When Jesus told him, then he turning about he kept on turning his head or his body until he saw John mm -hmm. yes. the disciple whom Jesus loved and he seeth John mm -hmm. fastened his attention upon him and he wanted to know from Jesus and what shall this man do mm -hmm. The Lord said to him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? Follow me. And that's what I see tonight as the inflexible directive when Jesus told Peter to follow him. There are places and things which are personally undesirable to us there are places and things which are unpopular because to others they are undesirable. Mm -hmm. The time of Peter's death and the type of Peter's death were precisely set mm -hmm. by Jesus. All right. He told him, when you are old, you will be a martyr. Mm -hmm. But neither of these conditions was set for John. Mm -hmm. In St. John chapter 21, verses 15 through 22, we have shades of night and rays of light. All right. We have burden and glory, mystery and revelation. The Lord said to Peter, when thou wast young, in other words, at the time of your natural advantages, you were self-sufficient 
because I allowed you to be self-sufficient. All right. And you were self-willed because I allowed you to be self-willed. But when you shall be old, which is commonly a time of natural disadvantages, mm -hmm. you're going to be reliant upon another person mm -hmm. because I will direct it so. And you're going to move about contrary to your own will. Mm -hmm. By divine permission for divine glory. <coughs> and you're going to die as a martyr. You're going to come into a condition that is greatly undesired. All right. It's a very unpopular quantity. As a matter of fact, death, and certainly a martyr's death, is the topmost of man's undesirable thing. Yes, sir. To us, mm -hmm. there are undesirable and unpopular directives which are sometimes given to us by the Lord. But of all of the things that we may find undesirable and unpopular in our lives, I doubt if any is as undesirable and unpopular as death, and certainly a martyr's death. All right. All right. But then God had a purpose for this undesirable and unpopular directive. Yes, yes that he gave to St. Peter. All right. And after he told him that he's going to have to give his life in the cause of Jesus Christ, he said, follow me. Mm -hmm. It was unconditional. <laughs> As some might say it, there was no water in the commandment to squeeze out, make it any better. That was down to the very rock bottom of the matter. And that was a heavy thing that the Lord told them. Right. When you get to be an old man, a time in your life when perhaps naturally things are going against your will, uh -huh. in addition to old age and the infirmities that you might have, mm -hmm. somebody's going to put your clothes on you. All right. And they're going to take you where you do not want to go. Yes, sir. And he was telling Peter, you're going to have to give your life for my name. Somebody's going to take, they're going to uh, execute you. Yes, sir. You're going to be a martyr. Mm -hmm. Then Peter reacted to that naturally. He kept on turning until he saw John. And when he saw John... One who seemed to Peter to be the very opposite and sailing through life in another boat. He seemed to be a man who was on an altogether different path. And Peter asked a question, and it was very natural and human. He really seems to, he really seems to say to Jesus, Lord, am I selected to be different? Lord of love and power and justice. And what shall this man do? Lord, what about this man? Lord, are you singling me out? All right. Am I alone? Mm -hmm. Lord, what of your love for me? <laughs> do you love John more than me, or do you love me less than you love him? I hear you preach. He's saying to Jesus, Lord, you have told me verily, verily that this is going to happen to me. Now, I simply want to know, is there a verily, verily, like my verily, verily for John? Right, right. And then Jesus responded, Peter, I am not announcing a verily, verily for John, only for you. Only for you. 
and accompanied by an additional mystery. Follow me. There is a mystery in Jesus' disposition of John's faith. There is a mystery in Jesus. Follow me. What can Peter do? How can he please Jesus? What about John? For here is an unanswered question, a hidden mystery. And Peter is asking, and where will my journey take me? It's an unanswered question. It's loaded with mystery. Yes, sir. But Peter is saying, there's no question about my end. For Jesus, you have made that very plain. It has no wraps of mystery on it concerning the fact of my martyrdom. It's open and plain and bitter and dark. But Lord, what about this man? What about this man? And Lord, what shall I do amidst this dark mystery and dark revelation? So here we have an inflexible, unchangeable, the inflexible and unchangeable will of God. And Jesus is saying to him, what if in my will there is an immeasurable difference between you and your brother John. Yes. What if? There he is. What if you are to die a martyr's death while he lives without ceasing? To extremes. And there are differences in God's choices or selections for us which are far less than this one. There's a lot of mystery in the will of God. There would have been something mysterious about this whole thing. But less of a mystery, perhaps, if Jesus had simply revealed to Peter that John was going to die naturally after a long life or in martyrdom. If it just said he's going to live a long time and then die. But he didn't tell him that much. He left him in the shadows. Of the mind, and what if I will that he lives until I get back? Yes. What is that to you? All right. I have a directive for you that will not bend. Right. You follow me, mm-hmm. and in that, Jesus added mystery to mystery. So Peter then, after the day of Pentecost, he took off. Following Jesus. He followed Jesus at Pentecost. And on a clear day, moved by the Spirit, he is a highly anointed prophet of the Christ, fresh from the upper room experience. He addressed sinful men in the Master's name and wrote truth in their hearts in a letter of fire as the eleven saints strong in the Lord stood by his side supporting him. And the result was 3,000 New Testament converts. 3,000. He followed Jesus down to Samaria, chapter 8 of the book of Acts. And again on a clear day, and moved by the Spirit of the Lord in his fellow apostles, he was a mighty instrument in God's hand. And now, accompanied by his brother John, he ministered to a multitude of men and women who had been baptized in Jesus' name. Two giants in Christ prayed for the people, then laid the hands on them, and the multitude was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave earth, following Jesus on a clear day. Yes, sir. (laughs) But in chapter 10, the day gets a little bit hazy, yes. just a trifle fuzzy, yes. as to his spiritual perception, and he's accompanied by certain brethren from Joppa, and was mightily used by the power of God as an honorable vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ to effect the first 
Gentile conversion to the Christian faith. Yes, sir. He was feeling his way through this experience, however. He wasn't seeing it all together in clear terms from the very first. But he followed. Next we find him in chapter 12 of the book of Acts on a rather dismal day in his history as he becomes a prison inmate. All right. prison inmate. But he followed Jesus as such. But while he was following Jesus as a prison inmate, he's not going into the incident alone because prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Oh yeah. so yes, he had the church behind him. He wasn't standing alone. His feet weren't in shackles and his wrists weren't in chains. Oh no, the whole church on the outside was supporting him in prayer as he followed Jesus. Yes. He hadn't got to that yet when thou shalt be old. I see. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. While he was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, the keepers of the door kept the prison. Behold, a miracle is wrought in an angel's visit. And light came into the prison the angel struck him on the side and said to him, Rise up quickly, his chains fell off his hands. The angel said, Gird, you gird yourself. Put your own clothes on. And you bind on your sandals. And he did what the angel told him. And he said, And you put your garment around about you and follow me. Yes. And so he walks out of the prison in angel's company. All right, in angel's company. And he knew not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. The iron gate leading to the city opened of its own accord, and the Bible says, and they went out and passed through one street, and immediately the angel departed. So Peter had company when he left jail. Yes, sir. Angel. And when this man of God came to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing and came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying, behold, a little girl named Rhoda went out and Peter stood before the gate and told them how the Lord had brought him out. Yes, sir. The Lord had brought him out. Yes, <laughs> kind of like they would say in the playwriting world, exits Peter at this point and then enters Paul for a little while and he followed Jesus then a little later in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts on a cloudy day, cloudy day. of much dispute at the Jerusalem council yes, and here he was with apostles and elders his brethren in Christ yes. and standing among some of the giants in religion in the world he showed himself unto God to be a brilliant man with an arresting conclusion for the argument that was at hand. Yes, sir. <laughs> Still following Jesus. Still following Jesus. <laughs> but he never forgot what Jesus told him when thou shalt become an old man. An old man. And now, I'd like to call your attention the second Peter one where Peter has ha having grown in the Lord All right. he's walked with Jesus and he's gone through the bright spots yeah. and the dim spots through the clouds and through the sunshine with the master and now he's almost at the end of the road All right. remember at first when Jesus told him he was going to be a martyr he was much concerned about what was going to happen to John. Mm -hmm. But now the man has grown up. Look out, preacher. 
and the word of the Lord has talked to him and the glory of the Lord has shined upon his pathway and experience with God has built the sea. Mm -hmm. And now he's a mature saint. Yes, sir. And he doesn't look at things like he did before he got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right. right. He's not viewing the world now as he did fresh out of seminary. Fresh. He's come to the place where he's resigned to the will of God. He opens in first sec, uh, second Peter chapter 1 and says, Peter, a servant. Peter, a servant. And an apostle. Peter, a love slave and an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he mentions the word servant before he mentions the word apostle. For he's more concerned now about following Jesus and doing his will, no matter what it costs, than being a big man in the church. Hallelujah. Here's a text which rings with the mind's harmony with God. It rings with servanthood. It rings with the motivation of a single-eyed vision with the deep consciousness of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I suspect by now he's an old man. Old man. And he's standing in the shadows of the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Master. But oh, what a radiant spirit he has. How lofty is his faith and how grand is his vision and how caught into the love of God he is. How unafraid, how unconcerned now is he about John's situation. Means a lot to grow up in the Lord. Lot to grow up in the Lord. He tells those children of God, and it's good for us tonight. I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. And I think it fit whatever others might think of me. I think it fit as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. I don't want to stir you up by simple Peter excitement. I don't want to stir you up by getting on the mall and putting on a shout. I don't want to stir you up by human fire alone. But I want to stir you up, first of all, by putting you in remembrance. Yes. I'm ready to talk to you children now. Yes, look. Look what he says next. Knowing that shortly, I'm putting you in remembrance, knowing full well that it won't be very long before I must put off this my tabernacle how am I going to put it off? I'm not going to die a natural death. I'm not going to catch a bad cold or get the flu or pneumonia or heart attack and kill over. It won't be long now. All right. I'm going to have to quit the scene. Quit the scene. As the Lord Jesus Christ is told. I'm just a few steps. Steps away, steps away from martyrdom yes. and I don't know how grueling it's going to be I don't know how awful or painful it's going to be but that doesn't really matter now Hallelujah. for mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord yes. trampling out the vintage where the grapes are ramp a score Loose the fateful lightning of his terrible sword, and his truth is marching on, is marching on in my heart. Yes, the Lord showed me something. I can't get away from the vision. The Lord won't alter it. 
And as we use it sometimes in P.A.W. Parliament procedure, the Lord hasn't amended the vision. Amended. The Lord hasn't stricken the record. The Lord hasn't deleted from the page of history. I know I've got to go. And I've got to go. As the Lord told me, the vision is yet for a little time, and at the end it's going to speak and not lie. And I'm waiting on it now. All right. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Oh, and I'm captivated tonight with that, just that word, our. His beautiful attitude toward Jesus. He's grown up. He's not willing to call him John's God. John's God. I'm not ready to put off my tabernacle as John's God told me. Mm -mm, he's our God. Yes, sir. He has no respect to person. He's John's God and he's my God. Yes, sir. He's Matthew's God and he's my God. He's Bartholomew's God and he's my God. He's Thomas's God and he's my God. He's our God. And I love him. He told me I was going to have to be a martyr, but I love him. I adore him. And I know he loves me. Just like he loves John. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know whether Peter knew where John was then, but he doesn't even mention the man's name. He's not concerned that much. I mean, he loved John, but he's not worried in a relational sense as to whether John was doing a hundred. Heart was working fine, eyes were 20, 20, and ears were in good shape, or whether John was having a big following or a little following or what? He wasn't bothered about that. He knew that he had a charge to keep himself yes, and a God to glorify a never dying soul to save and sit it for the sky. And he has made up in his mind he was going to serve the Lord till he died. Preach. That's a, that's a, that's a good preach. Hallelujah. Help us to watch and pray. Help us to watch and pray. And on your street rely, O Lord, assured if we are trust betray, we shall forever die. On me with jealous care. As in thy sight to live. O thy servant, Lord, prepare a strict account again. This is a day, as it has always been, the children of God. We must be cautious as to how we look at ourselves in the light of the prosperity of others. Some of us, if we don't watch it, will find ourselves complaining against God because somebody else has a stronger body than we have. All right. We may want to worry God to give us a body just like that. It may be that God has decided I'm not going to give you a body like theirs, but I am going to tell you to follow me. In a congregation like this, there are varying degrees of wealth. We don't all, we don't, we don't all have the same amount of money at this convention. Some may have come, so to speak, on a, a wing and a prayer, while others came in a Cadillac or a jet. But why do we come in a Cadillac or a jet or whatever? We come in an ox cart. There's a common directive for all of us. Follow me. Follow me. And don't allow your degree of fervor the quality or quality of your commitment to be based upon what God does with your fellow man thank you Jesus I guess we aren't all going to be big rich preachers we aren't going to all have sprawling ranch houses all of our lives aren't going to have two three fur coats 
and all the pastors are going to have big congregations. Uh, but where the large or small in the big city of the small town, Jesus is saying, follow me. Follow me. I want to know what the Lord wants me to do. I enjoyed Bishop Paddock's Sunday school lesson this morning so much, and particularly as he treated on the part about being content. And it means so much to be content. Not lazy. Not lazy. Not void of industry. Not short on vision, but content. <laughs> Simply trusting every day. Trusting through a stormy way. Even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus. That's all. That's all. If to go or stay, with little or much, in sunshine and in shadow, with favor, without favor. Praise the Lord. Whether I'm climbing the ladder in the PFW rapidly or slowly or seemingly not climbing at all. Whether the big folks are with us or against us or paying us no attention, that's not primarily important. <laughs> the main thing is that have we heard the voice of God saying, follow me. When we have heard that voice, yes, thunder and cloud or sunshine, in life or death, in the ups and the downs of life, little or much, big city, small town, short car, long car, follow me. Trust me. If my way is clear, like it was with Peter on some of his clear days of experience, trusting if my path be drear, but when in danger for him call, trusting Jesus, that's all. Thank you, Lord. Brightly does his spirit shine into this poor heart of mine, and while he leads, I cannot fall. Trusting Jesus, that's all. Trusting Him while life shall last. However, long or short, with an abundance or a meager amount of substance to go upon. Thank you, Lord. Trusting Him while life shall last. With a robust, powerful body, a weak, puny frame to carry my spirit in, trusting Him while life shall last. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trusting Him till earth be past, till within the jasper walls. Trusting Jesus. That's all. I guess I'm about ready to wind down now. But I'm struck by the word that St. Peter uses after he talks about his coming martyrdom. He says, moreover, strange thing. <laughs> but he can talk about martyrdom and then use the word moreover. I will endeavor that you may be able, after my death, to have these things always in remembrance. Do you mean to say, Brother Peter, that there is something more over? That there's something beyond death? That there's something that can be added to martyrdom? More over! I didn't know, I thought death was final, not for the faithful servant of God!
Thank you, Jesus. St. Peter does not seem to see that mar martyrdom is an end or an ultimate thing in itself, but rather he sees that service can be added to martyrdom. He sees that martyrdom is not a quality that stands fearsomely alone, but that its edge is somehow blunted by service to God. Right. And he sees no reason to worry about the end of things when our service to God is what it ought to be. It doesn't really matter, he seems to say, which way we go out of here and how soon we go out as long as we die trusting God and serving him with all of our heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our vision of what is ultimate in life is very important. And I say it again to you, dear folks, tonight. Moreover, it's beyond. There's something beyond death. There's something beyond sickness, something beyond suffering, something beyond poverty, something beyond trouble. Moreover, there's something beyond. There's something beyond. All of the darkness which is in corporate and suffering and martyrdom are invaded by, they are pierced through with and overshadowed by the grand and glorious and inflexible directive of Jesus. Follow me. Follow me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just follow. Just follow me. Just follow. Don't worry about who is making who's who, if it's not you. Don't worry about who's got what, and who looks like what, and who's wearing what, and who's driving what, and who's building what, and who's going where. Don't let that hang you up. Take it to Jesus. Just follow me. get bogged down in this discouragement. And we may even think that God himself is unfair to us. And that somehow he has laid down his rights of lordship and forgotten us in our corner where we are. There is no way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He knows who you are. He knows who I am. He sees you where you are. He knows how we feel. He knows how long we've been around. He knows where we want to go. And he knows how we want to get where we're going. He knows. He knows. Hallelujah. Let us not set the standards of our living, our being, by those who are around us, especially when we have heard the voice from above, which has instructed us where to go and how to go and what to do and how to do. Let us not be bogged down. Oh, these are days when there's a lot going on. There's a lot of money in circulation. <laughs> Oh, and there's a lot of talk. A lot of talk. And I guess sometimes what is supposed to be testimony is really a bragamony. 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 Lot to be heard. Much being said. And if we don't watch ourselves, we'll find our little hearts allowing themselves to be shriveled up by the pressures which are brought to bear upon us from the outside. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, if it is my will that he lives until I get back. But 
What's that to you? What's that to you? Don't worry about that. I have an inflexible directive for you. Follow me. Thank you.